Hey guys, welcome. In today's video, we're going to be tackling one of the most elusive and difficult questions about game development. This is basically the holy grail of game dev. And while it is important for AAA developers, it is even more important to indie developers. This is the difference between a launch that completely flops and a launch that is wildly successful. And this is my theory that some indie games out there actually manage to be very successful with very little marketing. I'm not saying to do that, I'm just saying it's been done and it's insane. All you have to do is figure out the answer to the question that is, at least on a subconscious level, sitting in the back of every single one of your potential players' minds. Why should I care about your game? So over 14 and a half thousand games were released on Steam in 2023. That is over 1200 games per month, which is on average 40 games per day. I don't make a lot of time to play video games. I am trying to do it more, but currently I don't even play 10 Steam games per year. Those numbers, 40 games a day are insane to me. And me as a consumer, how do I choose which games I buy? I buy games that I care about. I buy games that I think look cool. I buy games that to me look like they are worth my time and my money and will give me an enjoyable experience. And I know you've heard this before, this is not new, but time is what every gamer is short on, not money. For example, I have a copy of Hades 2 on my computer. I haven't even played it yet. And it's not because I don't want to, it's because I'm currently playing another game right now and I don't have time to play both. And by the way, I'm not just rambling about my gaming habits for nothing. I hope my point is coming across here. My point is there is a stupid amount of competition out there for game developers and players have to carefully pick and choose which games they think are worth their time. And because they have to be so picky, they will only buy and play games that they actually care about. And why they care about it will vary from player to player. Maybe they think it looks cool, or they think the combat looks amazing, or they want to explore this big, beautiful open world, or they care about the story and they want to see how it plays out. But these are all just different ways of saying that they care about the game. So as developers, our job is to not just make the game, but also figure out how to make people care about the game. And there is a problem here. And that's because we as developers, we might think we know what's cool about our game. But when you're knee deep in art and code and shaders and build building levels and designing enemies or puzzles on paper or in engine, it just gets way too easy to lose sight of what is actually cool for players. You will have created things that you think are extremely cool, like you have levels that are procedurally generated, for example. But the players, or some of the players, might not care about that thing at all. There's a billion procedurally generated games out there at this point. But you as the developer, you went through all of this tedious work creating that system, nailing down all the little intricacies, coding all of that out, and players just don't care about that. Players care that it works, they care that it's fair, and they care that it looks good, but that's really all they care about. So this is something that's extremely important to keep in the back of your mind when you're creating materials to post on your Twitter or screenshots for your Steam or videos for YouTube or TikTok. There is a difference between what you think is cool and what the public thinks is cool. Now, in doing my research for this video, I did stumble across something that I had never heard of before that I think will be very, very helpful. And if you take it and you use it, it can help you figure out how to make people care about your game. But before we get to that, I wanna bring up two points that are absolutely crucial about getting people to care about your game. The first thing is you need to care about your game. Now, I just want to preface this by saying it is completely normal for devs to have spikes and dips in energy levels and in productivity. That stuff goes up and down all the time. That's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about you care about making your game the best game that it can possibly be for the player. You're not just slapping the thing together as quickly as possible so that you can move on to your next project or get a quick paycheck or something like that. Passion from creators breeds passion from the consumer. You care about the story, you care about the little details, and you care about the game feel. And the second thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to make an appealing game. If you go to Steam and you look at the most wishlisted games under any category or any genre, what will be at the top of that list is the best of the best. Some of them have bigger marketing budgets, some of them have bigger teams, yes. But the games at the top have earned their place there. They did not get there through luck or going viral once or something like that. The devs worked hard on their game and they tried to make it as appealing to players as possible. Now, most of you have probably heard of a game design document, which is helpful in actually planning and creating your game. Well, let me introduce the CVP or the customer value proposition, which is a horrible name, 
but it's extremely useful for indie developers. And I will leave a link down below in the description for this. But you can think of this as a cheat sheet. If you go through this and you have well-researched and well-thought-out answers to every single question on it, then you will have thorough and persuasive answers about why someone would want to buy your game, and what kind of experience players would have if they did decide to pick up a copy of your game. First, we look very broadly at all of the benefits that the game offers to our players. So this is literally just making a list of every single positive experience the players might have while playing your game. Not every single player will care about every single thing on this list, but that's okay. This is a full comprehensive list of all the benefits. Doing this will help you answer the question from the customer's perspective, why should I buy your game? Which will require you to have very in-depth knowledge of what your game has to offer. And if you are an indie, then you definitely should. But if it's really early days, then a game design document will help you solidify all of that. And I really like that this chart also includes potential pitfalls. And when we're talking about the benefits that our game has to offer, a potential pitfall could be that we end up heavily talking about a certain feature in our game that players just don't care about at all. And if that's the case, then any marketing you do, anything you post online about your game, it's going to fall completely flat. Or in an even worse scenario, it could even detract people from wanting to play your game. Now we shift gears just a little bit and look at the good points of playing our game when compared with playing against a competitor's game. For me, this would be what do I like about Ori versus Hollow Knight. I personally get much more invested in the characters and the world of Ori than I do with Hollow Knight, for example. Now, this list will help you answer the question, why will someone buy my game over my competitor's game? There's gonna be more research involved in this because this requires you to have in-depth knowledge of your game as well as the next best thing that players might want instead of your game. And again, here we wanna watch out for value presumption, where maybe we're presuming that one thing about our game that's different compared to our competitors is better, but it's actually something that people don't care about at all. And our focus and energy would be better spent on working on other things. And finally, we look at our game in a new way for the third time. This time we're really zooming in and focusing on what makes our game special. This is likely your game's hook. For example, when I think of Celeste, I think of the world's tightest platforming mechanics combined with some of the most deeply emotional storytelling about anxiety, depression, friendship, and overcoming personal struggles. So this area of your document should help you answer the question, again, from the customer's perspective, what is the one thing that I should remember about your game? And this, again, will require you to have very in-depth knowledge of your game and the next best thing. And this will require you to research what relevant players will care about your type of game. Knowing your target audience's demographic is one thing, but you need to know that you need to know what they like. So once you have finished this document, this will help you market your game more effectively. Every indie developer I have ever spoken with hates marketing, but marketing does not have to be this awful thing. Really, you're doing all of this work for your game and for your audience so that you can figure out the best way to communicate why people should care about your game, which is not a bad thing. If you've made an appealing and a good game, people will enjoy playing it. Marketing is the work you're doing to ensure that players know why they would want to play your game in the first place. That's all I got. See you next week. Bye.